In this video, traders, we're going to look at what trading volume shows us. Stay tuned. Hey, traders, very warm welcome to you. Okay, so we know what volume is. We see it on the lower part of our chart. Generally, that's where we put it. It's showing us the number of shares, if it's a stock that is traded, or the number of contracts that is traded, if we're looking at futures, or if we're using FX, it's notional volume, which is generally aggregated because it's not a centralized exchange, but you get the idea. So how can we use volume? What is it used for? Why is it useful? Okay, so the first thing is, if we're trading a stock or a share, we can look at the volume traded relative to the float. So what is the float? The float is the number of shares in issue. And if volume is presented to us in number of shares traded, we can often say, hey, this stock's got X amount of shares in float. And today, so far, we've traded a third of the float, for example. Sometimes that happens on a low float stock. But the important thing is we can see how it really is, how much participation there is effectively. You know, if you've got the float, sometimes you get a low float stock, the float might turn over multiple times during the day, which is a good sign of a really, really, a lot of speculative uh, traders involved in it. Uh, a lot of people looking at the stock, that kind of stuff. You know, or you might have a, a big cap, a really mega cap stock that's got a massive float and um, that's doing a decent size of volume. It's not very relevant in terms of, you know, percentage of the float it's doing, but you get a kind of benchmark of what the sort of volume should be each day. Next thing, uh, in fact, before we move on to exhaustion, that just reminds me, you can actually use volume as well to see what is the normal participation. Okay, so let's say you've got, uh, I don't know, you do 1 million shares a day, for example, 1 million contracts a day, just using an arbitrary number here, and then you're watching a trading day some time, time in the future, and all of a sudden you're doing 2 million or 4 million a day, that gives you an idea that, hey, this thing now is of interest to a lot of people. The average volume is one. Now we're doing twice the average volume, four times the average volume. This is worth watching. So for a trader's perspective, you might be worthwhile looking at that and saying, hey, we're doing normal, more than average volume on the day. This is interesting. Or you split it up and say we're doing more than average volume in the first 15 minutes, first hour, first 30 minutes, whatever it may be. OK, let's move on. Exhaustion. What I mean by exhaustion? Exhaustion is when a trend has come to an end, the final hurrah, if you like. So we have this scenario here. We've got price moving down, moving down. Often you'll get that last blast at the end of a, at the end of a downtrend or an uptrend, and volume may well do this. Okay, you've got good steady volume. Then at the end, you've got a big high volume peak indicating that there's a lot of people trading. A lot of participation, a lot of sellers have got aggressive, trade, 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 trading, left a big volume spike. If it's at the bottom of a move, often that can signify some kind of exhaustion. So use volume in conjunction with that. If we didn't have that spike, we might say, well, I want to wait for the spike because we're not quite, we haven't flushed out the last of the sellers yet. It's really, you know, if you think about you know, a move, a market move. As it moves away, 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 eventually people are just like, I can't take it anymore. I have to just go to, I have to just go to market. I've been maybe pushing a limit down, moving a limit down, moving a limit down. I've not been filled. And then the crowd just goes, right, I just want to get out. And then they just sell, sell at market. That causes the massive spike in volume often can indicate the end of a trend. And maybe then you get a little pullback up and you can use that volume spike in conjunction with the price action to show you some exhaustion. Okay, guys, next one I've got is accumulation. So accumulation, uh, we've talked about this kind of stuff before, but it's pretty much where we have a situation. Let's give the, the uptrend a bit of love. You come up and you're just sitting there and it's kind of just sitting in a range. Normally a bit wider than that, but you get the point. Often volume may well pick up in the range or it may decline in the range. The thing is you're looking to see the pattern. You're looking to see how that relates to the volume previously prior to the move and how it relates to the volume after the move. So perhaps you have big volume on the move up. Then you have a downtrend in volume. Volume starts to decline. Volume starts to decrease. It just means that people aren't quite sure what's going on. And then it gets a burst of move. Or the other way around, volume increases, indicating a lot of people people are guessing the next move and then perhaps the move fakes out and pulls the other way because there's so many people positioned on one side. You get the idea. I'm not going to go into strategy now, but the point is you're using volume again in conjunction with price action to give you a clue as to potentially what's going on behind the scenes or under the bonnet. All right. Next one is move strength. What do I mean by move strength? 
you know, if you've watched the channel, guys, if you're a subscriber, and by the way, thank you for your support if you are a subscriber. If you're not, maybe consider doing so. Anyway, move strength. A good drive higher often has good volume with it. And it's one of my filters when I'm looking for my first kind of momentum pullback trade is I want to see good volume on the drive. I want to see a good distance drive and I want to see good volume. So I'm using volume to see the strength of the move. If the move isn't on high volume, I'm a little bit less, well, I'm a bit cautious of it because I think it could just be drifting up on someone doing a very small amount of volume, right? The very small amount of trade, should I say. If it's on high volume, it means there's been a lot of participation in that. A lot of people have got involved in it. Some decent money has changed hands. Okay, uh, the other way of looking at volume is, I like to use is a stay out filter. What do I mean by that? Listen, if you're trading intraday, a great one for intraday as well as swing trading. If you're trading intraday and you see that volume is just low, there's lunchtime shop, nothing's going on, you don't want to get involved in it. You just don't want to be involved in the trade. So you can quite easily put a level that you want volume to be above to get involved. And it stops you making trades in environments which are just not conducive to trades, especially if you're trading momentum, you're looking for continuation patterns. If volume's low, guys, it's probably not gonna happen. So it's a good, good way, very easy way and simple way of having a stay out of trouble filter. Okay, and the last one, of course, is part of an indicator input. You could be, in, you could use, it's part of an indicator for something like VWAP, volume weighted average price, one of my favorite indicators, uh, on balance volume, the list goes on. So volume is important. It, the best way of using volume is in conjunction with price. It's how it relates to price. When price goes to a new high, what happens to volume? When price pulls back, what happens to volume? Another one might be price pulls up, pulls back, volume starts to decline. That's what we like to see if we're buying that pullback. We don't wanna see vol price volume start to really pick up as it's pulling down. It might indicate a lot more pressure. So it's all, of, everything in trading is all about how it is relative to something else. So volume relative to price, price relative to prior price, relative to time, all those relationships together to give you a picture as to potentially what's going to happen next and make your trade whether that's in the next 10 minutes 10 hours 10 days or 10 months all right guys trading volume thumbs up if you like this kind of stuff see you in the next one take care bye bye